compared to something. He said in verse 2, it is like the precious ointment upon the head. And that precious ointment is found back in Exodus chapter number 30. And that holy anointing oil was made after the, the art of the apothecary. And God gave the ingredients and freedom that there was to be no substitute. There was one way that it was to be made and it was never to be changed. If it was ever changed, friend, it was not that holy anointing oil. But as you go on in scripture, friend, you find the devil comes along. And like everything else, he always tries to come up with a Counterfeit. Yeah. That's why we've got a lot of counterfeit spirits in our churches today. Amen. That's why we've got a lot of counterfeit doctrines in our churches today. That's yeah. why we've got a lot of counterfeit Bibles in our churches today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, before I move on, let me say this. You know, uh, every once in a while, it's good for you to get beside yourself. Old timers used to say to get the can't help it. You don't see a lot of folks in church anymore get the can't help it. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Amen. And when you get the can't help it and you're beside yourself, friend, it is unto God. You get one of those services, friend, when folks start getting filled with the Spirit of God, the preacher doesn't have to get up prompt for somebody to give a testimony. Right. Yeah. The preacher don't have to get up pump and prime and say, God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Amen. Hello? Yeah, right. Preacher doesn't have to get up and say, now look, I, I know surely God has been good to somebody this week and somebody ought to have a word for the Lord. Somebody, surely somebody ought to have a testimony for Jesus. And surely God's done something and just on and on and on until finally somebody finally gets up. Yes, preacher, I, I've got a word for the Lord. And friend, if you're not beside yourself, you'll be bragging on everything else but Jesus. Yeah. Right. Amen. But if you're beside yourself, Amen. Yep. Amen. Difference. And when you're sitting there uh, and, and the Spirit of God starts filling you, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and it's kind of like a, uh, from grape juice to grape wine, that fermenting process. Uh, you can't put it in old bags, friend, in old skins, uh, uh, because those old skins can't contain it, it'll burst. Uh, and that's the way you are, friend. Uh, uh, whenever that new spirit gets to moving inside of you, I, I, man, I, and you get to the point, I, it just has to come out, amen. I, and when it comes out, it's under the Lord. Amen. amen. You out, listen, if you go on visitation I, I, one of these Saturdays or whenever I, and you're sitting in somebody's living room and you might be supposed to be the silent partner I, and your other partner might be doing the talking I, and you're supposed to be sitting there on the couch praying, I, I'll guarantee you one thing, if you really get a hold of God, if you ask God to feel you while you're sitting there on the couch, I, you won't be the silent partner for very long, amen. I, it won't be long to where you'll have to bust out new wine I, and you have to tell that individual, I, I just like the Apostle Paul, I think myself happy old King Agrippa. Hey, glory to God. Let me tell you where God found me. Let me tell you what I was when God passed by. Let me tell you what God did for me when He washed my sins away with the blessed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you what life is like of being a new man in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. You won't be able to contain it. Right. Amen. Yeah. Hello. Amen. Hey, y'all get filled with the Spirit before you get up here and start singing. And things will be different. That's right. Yeah. There will be. Yeah. Amen. 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 Sir. Hello. Well, preacher, we think you're the only one that's supposed to act that way. <laughs> okay, I'll enjoy it. Help yourself. Be miserable. I don't care. Well, I do, but, you know. <laughs> Hello? Man. Yeah. yeah. I like, Brother Jim, I, I like going home on Sunday night when God's been around here twice in both services on Sunday. And, 
And man, when I, I go home and, and God's just blessed me and God's preached through me and, and I, I'm wore out, I'm wore out so bad I can't hardly stand it physically, I, but I'm so wound up on the inside. I, I, I even know I, if I go to bed at 12 or 12.30 or 1 o'clock in the morning I, and lay there, mama starts snoring, Tad starts snoring, I, but there is this heavenly clock inside of me I, that was designed a long time before the Swiss clock makers ever came on the face of this earth. And it's still wound up, man, like a nine-day clock. And it ain't winding down too quick. And my heart's about to beat out of my chest. Amen. Hey, friend, I like it. I like it. I like it. I know when I get up on Monday morning after a Sunday like that, physically I feel like I've been run over by a Mack truck. And that Mack truck didn't think he'd done a good enough job. So he called in a concrete fly axle. I feel that the brim and it backed up over me again. But thank God that spiritual inner man on the inside is satisfied. Is satisfied yeah. and longing for the next time that God can come in and God can do the same again. Amen. Amen. That anointing. Now I want you to notice what it's saying here in verse 2. You have the Spirit of God in you. Yeah. But us being that royal priesthood now in the church age, you don't just need the Spirit of God in you, but you need the Spirit of God on you. Yeah. And there's a difference. Amen. Yeah. You have the Spirit of God just because you're saved. Right. right. While you may try to condense Him down to a small area in your heart somewhere, friend. Uh, he's not going anywhere. He's still there. You can't do anything to cause him to leave. Right. right. But there's a difference in having him in you and having him on you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The Bible said in verse 2, it's like the precious ointment upon the head uh, that ran down upon the beard, uh, even Aaron's beard, uh, that went down to the skirts of his garments, uh, as the dew of Hermon, uh, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. Uh, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Uh, Hermon is about 115 miles north uh, of Mount Zion and the mountains of Zion. Uh, and what the Bible is declaring to you here, uh, just like that dew starts on those northern mountains, uh, uh, in the wee hours of the morning and begins to fall and refresh and blanket uh, and flows just like a blanket uh, uh, being laid down on an individual. Uh, it covers all of the valleys and all of the mountains and all the plains uh, until it comes down and rests upon uh, uh, Mount Zion uh, and then Mount Zion and Mount Hermon and everything in between uh, has got that anointing to do upon it uh, and that unity is there, amen. Uh, and that is uh, what he's saying about when Aaron is the high priest was anointed with that oil, they poured it on his head and it ran down through his beard and it dripped off his beard on his garments until it finally obeyed his feet. Amen. What's that mean? That means he didn't just have the oil inside of him, but thank God he had the oil on him. Amen. Well, what's that got to do with Moses? It's got a lot to do with Moses. Amen. Some of you are standing on the rock and you have the Spirit of God inside of you. But if you want to see the glory of God, if you're going to be beside yourself, and it's going to be under God, you've got to jump off of the rock. Amen. I'm not talking about jumping overboard. I'm talking about jumping off the surface. Because you've got to understand as you stand on that rock and look down into the cleft, it's from the cleft of that fountain of living waters is free and flowing. It's from the cleft to that rock, from the depths where that oil is coming, and from the depths where that honey is coming. So you need to jump off, bless yeah. God, into the cleft of that rock. And instead of just having the oil of God in you, you need to jump into that pool, amen. Yeah. You need to jump in and get the oil all over you, thank God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you it'll change your life. Right. Hello? Yeah. It'll change your ministry. Right. It'll change your outlook. Amen. 
I've been asked on several occasions over the years, Preacher, why do you stay at Bingham Heights? I've been asked on a few occasions, go take a church other way, other places, other states. Preacher, why do you stay? Why do you stay? What makes the difference? What makes the difference is getting the oil on you instead of just the oil in you. Right. Yep. Man. It'll change you. It's that getting that oil on you is that unction from the Holy One over there in First John. Yeah. And when you've got that unction, when you've got that oil on you, friend, man, it's because you're already filled on the inside. And sometimes it's that feeling that erupts, and then God gives you that anointing. But everything is going to change in your life when you get the oil on you instead of just in you. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you this, Brother Doug, whenever you go to the nursing home that one Sunday every month, whether anybody else shows up or whether if, if nobody ever comes, if you've got the oil of God on you, right, it'll make all the difference in the world. And, and there may be 200 residents in that place, and there might, might, might be but two come out in wheelchairs, uh, and one of them might fall asleep on you. Uh, and the other one might, I mean, you may look at them, and it may look like they're in the twilight zone, uh, and they ought to be hooked up to a respirator anyway. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, you get the oil of God on you, and it won't make no difference uh, uh, because you'll be out of the world. Uh, and the preaching that you're doing, it'll be preaching unto God anyway. You'll know that you've got God's audience and you'll know that you're doing God's will and you'll know that God knows everything that's going on. Friend, listen, whether you're preaching to one or whether you're preaching to a million, it's the Word of God. Yeah. And friend, one deserves a hundred percent just like a million deserves a hundred percent. Amen. 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 Scott, when you go to the juvenile center, and I know over the years that place has got cold and hard and kids are stiff-necked. They make all the difference in the world. If you go in there on first evenings, you got the oil on you. Yeah. Uh, your outlook towards those, you go in and you look at them, boy, there's a bunch of infidels. If anybody on the face of earth decides to deserve to go to hell, certainly this crowd does. And I'm telling you, friend, when you go in with the oil of God on you, it'll change everything about your life. Brother Mike, when you and Brother Jim goes to that other home, if you go in there, I'm not concerned about what the brethren thinks. Not concerned with whether any other church is doing anything better or not. Not concerned with how many you've got there to back you up. I mean, if you just go in there, how with the oil of God on your life, your outlook will be entirely different, amen. 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 That's right. Listen. Those kids, they don't have any hope apart from Jesus, Scott. Amen. Their homes, most of them are there because of the atmosphere, the, the home that they came out of. Them old folks in these nursing homes, man, they've done come to the end of life's road. A lot of them are there because their children don't care anything about them anymore. And they just put them in there, their own death row. That's where they are. When you get in that nursing home, friend, you're on death row. That's all you can make of it. You're there until you die or until the rights of the church takes place. What do you need? You need somebody that cares, amen. And thank God, the Holy Spirit of God cares whether the family cares or whether the family doesn't, whether any churches care, whether churches don't. Thank God, the Holy Spirit does. And if God 